Please give a very warm welcome to Wilhelm Sassnall. <laughs> so I was wondering how to begin, and of course, uh, many thanks to Sam and Theodora and everybody else at the Bayer Foundation. I wanted to uh, maybe begin um, with the beginning, but then I thought we should begin with what happened before the beginning, because usually Dan Graham once told me that we should always um, ask the question about what music an artist is listening to. We only can understand an artist if we also know what kind of music he or she is listening to. And that question usually comes much later in the interview. But I thought we could kind of begin with that, because it all began with music in your case. So I wanted to ask you to tell us a little bit about your beginnings and this obsession you had in your early teens, really, as a teenager. Yeah, so, I will, yeah, so I, I will bring back your, because I knew your question about, about my first uh, painting in my uh, catalogue raisonnaire, what would be. So I think that would be just a uh, little bit vinyl, that would be a painting I, I did, I think, in 1999, and this is on the green background, there is the black vinyl record with a red, with a red sticker on it. So that was, that was indeed uh, how, what was very important for me was all this entourage around music. And my interest in, 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 in art came from music. I, I, was, um, I was a teenager when I started listening to... Oh, oh. Can, I, can I talk without microphone? Can I, can, can we... Yeah, with microphone. So, um, I, I started listening to metal music. I, was this, that was, I, I became a little bit more aware, not listening just only what was what was on the radio, but was a, I became a metal fan, and through metal I um, I was trying to copy uh, sleeves covers of the of the bands right on the on the uh, on the bags uh, that we that we carry on going to school, uh, the logos, the motives from the from the music. <clears throat> and and that's how I realized I have these skills that I can redraw or repaint. That is quite that's quite easy for me. And through this music, I came to alternative. I remember first I I heard in 19 that was exactly na uh, 1987. I I I I I heard the first record of uh, of Bauhaus. I didn't know what was Bauhaus. I first I, first I, I I heard the the band. Then I learned that it was this artistic movement, and that's that's how it started. I trying to learn about, for instance, cubism. I I read a book about cubism. I didn't understand a sentence from that because it was very complex, very uh, very professional book. So I, that that was that's how I that's how I learned that that music interfere with uh, with art, and that was that was the the, the 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 beginning of my interest in art. And it was also architecture quite at the beginning because you left uh, the place where you were born for Krakow, actually initially to study architecture. Uh, and I'm interested to know a little bit more about that and what you know was your and why you then left architecture. Because when I came to Poland first, we met. Uh, this amazing um, visionary architect, really, called Oskar Hansen. Uh, because I did a whole series of, of interviews with Polish pioneers. We went to see Stanislav Lem. So we actually came to Krakow in the late 90s several times, once to meet Stanislav Lem, once to meet Czeslaw Milos. Um, and then uh, also, and that was somewhere else, I don't remember where, quite remote to visit Oskar Hansen. Of course, Oskar Hansen was this very pioneering architect who invented open systems and who was uh, never really allowed to be an architect. So he then, because of um, the censorship and his impossibility to really be an architect, he somehow then went into art education and became the teacher of, of many artists. I was wondering, what about your background in architecture? No, that was, that was, that was very man mundane. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't have idea about, um, about Oskar Hansen. I, I, I wanted to be an artist, but I knew that being, that being in, in technical, my secondary school was technical. I knew that I, I'm not gonna get to, to Academy of Fine Arts, so, so architecture was only a substitute for, uh, for a painting department that was finally became my aim, and I succeeded after two years to to get to to Academy of Fine Arts. Um, but of course, and what is interesting that architecture was for me quite 
I would say transparent at that time. I wanted to be an artist, so because being because studying architecture was uh, uh, there, there was there was part that I that I could draw or paint, and of course pro being a d design the buildings was fun, but there was all of all all of a lot of technical uh, subjects that I didn't like. So, but but what's interesting that now. Architecture became for me uh, quite important, but also because because I see how it reflects how society and vice versa reflect society and architecture. But this is but that's that's what happened only uh, recently. And and actually, I I take advantage of of, of uh, knowing something from that from that moment when I studied. And I was interested also in your beginnings related to a group because uh, uh, you mentioned once in an interview actually. With Achim Bachert, you said there was a group called Pretty Group. I don't know what it is in Polish. Ladnia? Ladnia. Yeah, exactly. And uh, what was the group? Did the group have a manifesto? Or? There was actually there were there were five there were five members of the group. Uh, each of us had a different uh, idea. And actually, what was what was common in this group that that we partying together and we we were throwing a parties. We were making a sort of a. Mm, backgrounds for the parties, playing music, but but we didn't. Um, and there, there were there was one of us, the, um, Marek Firak. He was the, he was the, he was an author of many manifestos, but they didn't. But there were rather manifestos for him, and we were pretty uh, anarchic, not being aware that we are anarchic. And um, I think this movement also, if if I can, if I can. Described as a sort of a movement was against Academy of Fine Arts, but we weren't aware of it then. That was some somehow uh, subconscious. We didn't want to paint and work that uh, the professors uh, expected from us. So, yeah. And you were at that time, of course, also, uh, and I remember that from an earlier conversation, also, you know, reacting to um, a sort of a, uh, a sort of a lack of, of pop art in a way. There was not really any color in Poland at the time. So it would be maybe interesting to hear a little bit about that because it seemed that, that there was maybe a reaction or something like that. You, you also said, I remember because we met uh, actually for the first time in 2002 and it's interesting because it's the same year when you also for the first time exhibited in Basel and had this you know, uh, breakthrough pr presentation here at the Liste, which got so much attention in 2002. And the same year we met in Urgent Painting, the exhibition which we did with um, Suzanne Paché and my colleagues at the Musée d'Art Moderne de la Ville de Paris. And I remember that at that time, in a conversation, you told me that, that there was some kind of absence of color in, in, your, in your memory of your childhood and adolescence in Poland. Well, that was, maybe that's not, that was exactly like that, but that was, I think that was reaction to Academy of Fine Arts again. Mm -hmm. Because they expected, that they, they wanted us to paint with the colors, thick layers of, of, of paint and canvas, and that was reaction on it. I didn't like it, I, I was very, um, I think for me it was very regressive to, to using that way, to, to, using, to using colors that way. So, so I rather, I, I rather painted black and white. Of course, that was also that's also because I used the the black and white photographs. But also, I I thought that the drawing was more. I, I was trying actually to 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 draw with a with the oil with a with the oil uh, colors. So that was that was that, that was the reaction for all the. Um, this this pushing us the students to be proper painters. For me, the painter at the time was sort of uh, maybe not the derogatory, but something that that wasn't the the most pleasant term. Being just a painter, at least it, in my sense, at that moment. And Panofsky said that the future, you know, often is invented with fragments from the past. So I was kind of wondering, who for you at the beginning of your trajectory as a Painter, were kind of, you know, painters who inspired you. Who were your heroes or heroines? There was, there was, there was the painter. There was a Polish painter, um, Andrzej Wróblewski. He was, uh, he was active during the right after the Second World War. He, he was witness of all all this cruelty of Second World War, and that's. He's 
also his paintings were very, very, very brutal, very crude, somehow clumsy, sometimes clumsy. And he was, he was very important for me. He was someone who, I mean, that was, he was also, what, what, was, what was interesting for me that he was on the, on the, on the brink of, brink of uh, abstract, abstraction and realism. So he, he practiced in, 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 in both. And that, that combination was, was, very, was very important for me. That There's he an could amazing be... painting here in, in your catalog by him. It's a realistic execution. Yes, that's the, that's, the, that's the execution, but it's here. So probably because he was a witness of it, his, his father was, uh, was killed. Uh, he witnessed uh, mm. he, his father's killing. That, that, that's probably, it, it, makes, it makes it reliable. Because sometimes you have, I, um, uh, it may be, uh, you might be uh, suspective that, that it's just a formal play. But he was the uh, one who, who sold it. And any other influences or painters you, you could I was, mention? I think there were, there were influences, but I, but I think there were, there were a little bit the, somehow unconscious influences. So for instance, there, was the, there were the comic books, but not, not the comic books that were, that were um, broadly known. That was like a very, very famous comic book in Poland for all the teenagers. It's called Tytus Romagia Atomic. That was about the two schoolboys and and an ape who was more smart than the other ones. Um, the way it was uh, was drawn was was also important for me. I referred it. I refer to to it uh, later on. Um, but there wasn't special. It wasn't. It, 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 I I don't think there was a special movement now i i think i but i but i rather but i more feel it than than know it that i i belong to this idea of of modernity of mo modernism because i what is what is important i think that i grew up in in the in the district that is part of the that's been set up in the 20s as an independent modern area of the city for the fertilizer factory for the chemical factory, so all the people and and it it was it, it it was it wasn't private. It belonged to the state. So this fact, so there were many people who came to 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 this part of Poland to to be the workers. So were my 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 grandparents, and because I grew up with my grandma, I was uh, and in this context. Uh, I think I was I was soaked with this idea of uh, I don't know if it for her it was also you know just uh, pointing out that we all are from somewhere else and I was I remember I was very, I was I was uh, somehow I, I felt well that it was sort of autarky autarky that was something that okay there you have the um, football stadium you have a culture house you have a swimming pool you have a park. And everything was around. That was also the train station. So for me, that was also idea of this. Um, and also, there was this very modern, ar modern architecture. There was very, very modernistic building of a culture house, quite unique. That's been only recently um, uh, rebuilt in a in a, in a uh, stupid way. So that was, I think, that was the that was the background of my. And I'm, I'm saying that because I. Now, when I go to the museum or when I when I look at the architecture, I I know that there is the link to this idea of, of uh, positive modernity. And of course, another inspiration was Seurat, and you often said it appears in almost all of your interviews that the Bastos in Asnières is one of your favorite paintings. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about Seurat as a as an influence, it's particularly this painting, right? Because it connects, because you mentioned your grandmother. Yes, And it connects right. actually to this summer, this very hot summer of 1939. Yes, and also because of, the, because of my grandma, I, was, I, I heard a lot of stories about the Second World War and, and, and basic history and her story, her private uh, history. So that was the summer, and, and she used to mention that the summer of uh, 39 was so hot. That was right before September, uh, 1st of September. Mm. 
And I remember for the first and 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 she 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 also mentioned that they used to go for at the at the uh, at the river uh, that that runs through the city. And they they took just they they they, they were bathing they were taking sun bath. And the landscape there it reminds uh, Asenier. This this landscape of bath, bathers and uh, uh, Asenia, you hardly can see that the, the background of the of the of the painting. There are the chimneys. There are the, some structure of the of the factory, I think, or some city. So when I when I saw this this painting, I thought that this it it resembled this atmosphere, this uh, the heat, uh, also the solitude of these people. That is something. Wrong is in the air, but yeah, I, I think that that that's anyway. That's how I connected these two. And you mentioned that you know through your grandmother there is this connection to the Second World War, the connection to to, to the memory also of the Second World War, and that at a certain moment started to enter the work. It didn't enter the work at the very beginning, but it started to enter the work, of course. So the Mao's in Poland work, and you, you said that actually several things were inspiring there. There was, of course, Landsmann's Shoah. There was also um, uh, Jan Tomasz Gross, the neighbor. So I was, wanted to ask you a little bit to tell us about that, because that was a very important moment where the work somehow shifted. That was, that was also the moment when, when, when in, po in, po in Poland um, the discussion started about uh, roles, uh, role of, 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 of Polish citizens, how they, what they did, how they behaved toward uh, Jewish neighbors uh, during Second World War, because I, we were learned uh, as, a, as a Polish kid in, in the primary school and, and, and later on as well, that we are only the victims, that we were the, the that we are the heroes of the, um, of humanity, because we we behaved that that way, we were the, the so uh, victimized. And at the turn of uh, it was late. It was actually turn of the centuries when uh, when this book by Jan Thomas Cross was released and uh, they broadcast it. Anyway, there were this 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 what we called it like a white pages of history. Uh, that were written, that were filled with uh, uh, with the description what's what's happened during this uh, during these times. I mean, you always knew that this that there are some parts of the cities that, that that were abandoned, that were empty, that there are some ruins of synagogues and so on. So, and all these facts, either uh, Shah by Landsman or uh, Maus by Spiegelman or um, Jan Thomas Gross were about these, about about the same. How Polish people <coughs> were silent, or sometimes they even helped <coughs> to um, to Nazis to get rid of Jewish neighbors. And for me, at the very beginning, I because I I, I was thinking that's too much. I can't accept it. That is something. Uh, maybe that's not. I'm not I, I I didn't de deny it, but somehow uh, something deep. In myself was was telling no that's that's too much, and I, I thought that, that that it's so important to to work it on that I couldn't resist and that, that, that that's how it started. I never, um, but I have to say that I never I I never did dare to paint or to to make a piece directly from the image of, of, of Auschwitz or other concentration camp. I always need some, um, I would say, like something that convey, like, uh, so I worked actually on the images from existing uh, works of art. I was kind of, <clears throat> sorry, wondering about Gerhard Richter in relation to that, because I didn't really find any references, you know, because in previous interviews you talk about Seurat and you talk about different other painters, but I never saw an interview where you talk about Gerhard Richter. And I was kind of wondering, you know, because talking about history and the way Richter, in a very complex way, connects, first of all, to, of course, the Second World War in terms of his own biography and then 
later on to a more recent past with these paintings, you know, which were exhibited here at the, at the Bailon, you know, um, of, of, of the Bader Meinhof, of course. And as they were in these very spaces here, it somehow came to my mind that I maybe should ask you about that. I was very curious, what is your relationship to Richter? Oh, he's, he's the one of the most important artists for me. So maybe for me it was too obvious to, to refer to him. So maybe that's why Sarai is not that, that but, but definitely uh, Richter is... Yes, and that, that, that's what I like, that's, that, that's what I like about Richter is, is, the, distan is the distance he has to, to, to the motives, to the, uh, to the objects he paints. Mm -hmm. That he never, that, that there, is not, there is no judgment, I think. That this distance make, makes it, it's rather, it's, it, it's a putting question. That not 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 uh, not uh, giving the answers. That's what is int very interesting for me. Mm. I'm not saying that this is moral ambiguity, uh, ambiguity, but but it, there's something that 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 leaves the discussion open. And then of course we have Wolfgang Tillmans because we are here in the space of Wolfgang Tillmans. And initially, you know, when Sam uh, said that the talk would happen here, I was thinking, you know, what a pity that we can't do the talk in your space. Mm. Um, upstairs in the painting, but of course, you know, it wouldn't work in terms of the auditorium. But now I realize why it could not have been organized more beautifully that we're actually talking in front of these amazing works of Wolfgang Tillmans of the Concorde, because, I mean, these are new, uh, Wolfgang explained it to us the other day, um, new versions of, he revisited his earlier work on the Concorde and, you know, did, these, did these, new, these new pieces based on the archive. It took him a long time to find you know, the negatives and find the archive again. Um, and shortly after we met in Paris, we met 2001, 2002, shortly after that, you actually took the Concorde. And there is uh, a whole history with you and the Concorde, at, you know, similarly complex as the one of Wolfgang. In your case, it didn't lead to a book, but it led to a film and it led to paintings. Can you tell us about your amazing history with the Concorde? That was Concord for me is also like a like a symbol. Like a, uh, yeah, that was that is still maybe now it is more a jumbo jumbo jet. And, but it, but there was always the symbol of, of modernity, something that is more, more the most advanced as a um, as a fruit of, of humanity. Uh, the, anyway, I remember from my childhood that was uh, because I, I grew up uh, in the communist part of Europe. Uh, there was we didn't uh, we didn't put together the pieces of Concord, but but pieces of uh, Tupolev one four four. That's a, that's a Russian response to to Concord, and um, so I, and I, of, uh, that, that, that's I, I was so small at the time that that my my father he sticked it to me. That he he put it together, and anyway I I was I I always wanted to. F uh, I had I had the dreams that I, I might one day fly with Concorde, so so finally I did once. That was uh, I think a month before uh, Concorde stopped flying. I took I took a Super 8 camera with me, and I shot the, the uh, just sky through the windows through the window of Concorde. I wanted to to check also whether whether it's true that from that height. Concorde flies, uh, I think it's 20 kilometers above the, above the Earth, that you can see the curvature of the Earth. And, but anyway, I shot, and actually you could, I, could, I could see that slightly, but that, but that was summer. I, 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 I was told that if I flew during the winter time, it, it would be pretty much visible. But I, uh, when I, when I, when I, when I got this, this, uh, this films, there were, there were, I think, ten or oh, something about ten cartridges of Super 8. I decided to, to, to display it uh, directly from Super 8 projector, but to put a piece of sandpaper on, a, on a projector to, to make, to make the film slide through the, through the sandpaper to make the film disappearing. So that was the, that was the piece. And that of course leads us to, to your films and uh, it's a whole other aspect of your oeuvre is, is your you know, amazing practices and experimental filmmakers. Um, 
And you once said that painting can actually contain more narrative than film, but that in both there is a certain atmosphere of anticipation. And that, I think, is very strongly there. I looked last night at all your films in one go on, you know, on my laptop, and that anticipation is, you know, is always there. Can you tell us a little bit about, about how, how it started with the films? What, what brought you to films? That was that. That was the same as with as with uh, with art itself. Because I was I was I started I, uh, uh, when I became a fan of music. It was so at, at the end of 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 uh, nine of eighties. My my parents they bought a TV uh, satellite television, and I I could I could watch to. Um, oh yeah, that's I, what I should say. I think that that's being being a kid in a, in a in a in this in this behind. The, uh, the Iron Curtain. I never lacked uh, good music. I think because there was because the the music that because the radio stations were quite good and they played really good. So I was I was quite up 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 up, up updated with uh, with the music. What's going on? So it was later on with uh, with uh, with uh, satellite television. I I did see a lot of video clips. There was this 120 minutes. There was this program about alternative music, and so I also wanted to be uh, a clip maker. And I bought, and I bought. Uh, that was also in the early 90s. Soon after, I started uh, learn how to paint. I bought, I bought uh, eight millimeters camera from uh, uh, my friend's father. And that's how I started. I put, I, I, ju I just, rec I, I just filmed it, and then I put it together with music. It's never been synchronized. It's been just sep separately played music, and there was the, the, there was the image. But then, then I learned more and more about about the art films. There was also very important uh, filmmaker, uh, Jan Julian Antonis. He was from Krakow at the time. He um, and and he did he did the films directly on the on the celluloid on the film he did this sort of uh, chronicles um, on the film there was very funny but also very I would say punkish uh, films so he was very important for me and that's how I that's how I started thinking about this also the conceptual art. Was part of the part of the idea for making the films. Uh, materiality of the film was important as well. I, I learned how to process all the, uh, how to process the the, the, the positives. It, it needed five baths. It's it's different than with negative, which is only which are only two 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 baths. So it was very complex. I was always arguing with my father, who was uh, who was angry with me because I I I I, I spoiled a lot of water to 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 run through the black box. Um, for me, it was also so. I mean, when you when you uh, I I think it's also with Wolfgang Tillmans' uh, works that I I I I feel. I like them a lot, also because of because of physicality of them, and in each of the of my practice, I think there is aspect of um, yeah, I can say of of craft. Mm -hmm. That is, I and I appreciate more and more than in 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 the age of digital area era that that uh, the handmade, very mundane sometimes things uh, are precious. And of course, at the same time, and that seems like a paradox, there is craft, but at the same time, you say that filming prevents you from becoming a master. And it's kind of, I thought it was a very interesting quote. And, you know, the other day I visited David Hockney, and he said, for, he didn't use that analogy with the, the master, but he said for him, when he does a film, or because he sometimes also does films, or then he writes a book, this is kind of a detour, you know? He needs this detour to always come back to painting. Um, so I was kind of wondering if, in your case, with the films, it, it, it's a detour, and and if you can explain a little bit to us why filming prevents you from becoming a master. Yeah, that's the, I, I totally agree. That's the detour, and and the, the, why why it happens is because I um, because I I don't want to chase my my tail. I, I I imagine that being being just a painter, I could just be 
be master of a style of, of sasna. I don't want to be like that. I want to I want to surprise rather than myself. I want to I want to make I want to check so many things, but I if I would be too close to paint to painting, I wouldn't see in the broader context probably. I could be blind to 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 the events of, of life, of uh, um, what's going on in front of my eye, because I would be, I, I wouldn't like to know what I'm gonna paint this or the next day. This is, this is, that would be so boring. So maybe that's why I need film. And I, what I, what I, what is this, uh, the, 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 the most important distinction for me as a, uh, um, to practice filming and and painting is that that it's that painting is 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 uh, is um, I can do in 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 solitude just on my own. The risk is, I can I can risk I can I can make mistakes. And I can I can I can, um, uh, I can waste even painting or time or I, it, which is different to the film set. And if I I do the films with the big films that that we've done uh, for so far with Anka. I, I I do I do with Anka because it it needs um, of course we Anka comes from uh, rather from literature and that's that that's how it works and she's more uh, also she can somehow organize and put the people together to to to, to navigate them I'm just I'm rather one of the crew and she can yeah I I think it's it's also the the, the Mm. That's that's the crucial difference. And what about literature? Because we spoke, you know, we spoke about um, architecture initially, uh, and then, you know, about your films. And as you just evoked literature, it's sort of uh, I didn't really have that in the script, but it came to my mind that during my Paris year, when I, when I lived in Paris, I would always pass by on Boulevard Saint Germain this wonderful Polish library, which I'm sure many of you know, uh, and I would you know, through that, first get obsessed by Stanislav Lem, and then get very obsessed by Szeslav Milos, and, you know, ultimately go and interview these writers in Krakow, you know, in your city. And so I was kind of wondering um, about this connection to literature, because I think particularly Stanislav Lem, mm -hmm. you told me the day before yesterday when we, we met, um, is somehow of interest for you. He's a very important writer for me, and he. I was surprised recently because I because I um, because I read the first book by by Stanislav Lem that was from '48, <coughs> that was his first novel, and it's called uh, I don't know what's the title in English. It's a, like a Hospital of Transition, Hospital Przemienienia, anyway. That's the that's the first book by by Stanislav Lem, and definitely he's 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 very important for me. As a as a writer, as a, um, as a visioner, but of course there's also and Miłosz. I'm I when when you mentioned that you've been to Krakow to visit them both, I, I feel very, I feel very proud. I, I have to admit that, that they they two great writers they lived there. And for me, for instance, Miłosz was 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 also very is he is very important for me um, because he's the one who who could describe the complexity of Europe and what can happen, what happened, what, what's going on now in Europe, in the world, before, because, because he, because he, he um, experienced both, I mean, either, either uh, Poland under uh, Nazi's occupation or Soviet's occupation. So he was the one who was always in doubt, and he was he was he was leftist, but he's ne he, he's never uh, followed an, any common movement. He was he was quite um, solitude in his thoughts, and he was somebody who didn't. He was a, he was also a teacher at. Um, at the Berkeley, so so students didn't didn't want to listen to him because they used to say that he's he's so anti, um, he he he's he he's not joining the revolt, uh, late 60s revolt, and he said, okay, I'm not gonna follow any common movement. Uh, anyway, he's th so these these two writers are important. That yes.
And do you also write sometimes? Other, because no, I never. I mean, we do. I do. I mean, what is what I write? Yes, that now 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 I have a big. That, that's that's like a big big um, project. Uh, I'm still at the beginning of it, even though I studied a year ago. I, I wrote I, I wrote the story the the history of of humankind sort of, but through my family. It actually it starts in Africa, comes with the first man when the man when the ape <laughs> becomes the man, and then um, tracing my tracing tracing my roots, <laughs> my 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 parents and so on knowing some facts and putting the filling the gaps between these between these facts between these events i i wrote sort of the script for the comic book that i'm i'm learning i'm relearning how to draw the comic book with this uh, with this story and this will be a book project or yeah yeah, yeah. That, that's that's going to be like a big like a big, but the script is quite long i mean it's it's going to be like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so this is the this is the material for, for, for a book. But it was actually interesting with uh, Stanislav Lem, you know, it's the only inter interview I ever did which really very badly went wrong because um, uh, we were thrown out of his house with Johanna Mitkowska um, for the very simple reason that after about 45 minutes, I brought up Tarkovsky. And uh, he got super red and he said, in my house one doesn't talk about Tarkovsky, you know, you have to leave. Because he was very upset about Solaris, and uh, well, you know, initially we talked about the future of Africa Congress, but he, he felt it was a strangely, you know, obviously Tarkovsky had used his book and had made an artwork out of it. So it's very. That's, that's interesting because because he. Yeah, we were thrown out. It was very cold, minus ten degrees, and Johanna and I were then in the snow and couldn't find a taxi. It was a real drama. <laughs> <laughs> I know that he accepted the other the other film, but, but the, the he, did. He, he did the other film, but not not Tarkovsky one. Yeah, no, the second one. Yeah, the second. One. He felt somehow okay about because it was closer to his script or something like that. But to come back to paintings, I, I wanted to um, to bring it back to to painting and and to your daily practice, or you know, very um, to your ritual in a way of painting, because you, you you talk about this idea that you really do every day almost the painting and that. Uh, um, I mean, the other day I spoke to Linette Adombwaki and she said something similar. She said, you know, if a painting isn't finished by the evening, then, you know, it's not going to be finished. She really, you know, it's almost like a day, a painting. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the case for you, but you also mentioned that one day a painting thing. You mentioned also that you have, you know, with your family that you have very clear, you know, habits and rituals of going to the, to the studio. Um, and I wanted to ask you just a little bit to tell us about that, because I'm very interested in this idea that you say you don't really want to know, you know, what you're going to paint in the future. You often say also that the painting develops whilst you paint, and there seem to be different possibility how you come to a painting. Sometimes it's a found image, mm -hmm. sometimes it's a newspaper, sometimes it's the internet. So I just was curious to know more how, how this works. Yes, painting is indeed it's a, it's a habit in, in my case. and um, I'm I'm slower. I can't I can't I can't paint. I, I'm sometimes sometimes still I can I can do I paint one one painting a day. But um, I'm I'm sick when I when I have to leave the studio and uh, when the painting is in a in a sort of a bad state that it's I mean that's nearly done but it's but it it doesn't look promising. So I, then I have to wash wash it away and rather leave a blank canvas. Waiting for another for for another attempt. Sometimes I try many times. So uh, just to make one painting, I, I it, it it needs I don't know maybe five even approaches to the same painting to 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 be satisfied with. And yes, I I work. I can't. Uh, I I know I can I can I can I have this switch to be tuned. On certain uh, sensibility that 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 capture the images from reality, and I I know I can find something to paint, but basically the images come they 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 come to me. I don't have to. Sometimes when there is the subject, when I want to I want to know more about this subject, when I find something, and then then. I think it needs deeper research. Deeper researches. I, I look for another images on internet. Many of the images come. They come from 
um, uh, from the from traveling. I'm a, I'm just a I'm as a I feel like a passenger that and sometimes I feel just as, as a someone who just only tran transmit the image that see onto the canvas. And of course, I, I want to leave it open. I can't say that I, that I belong to any, that um, this we, were, we are talking today with, with Anka about, about this, um, the ty about cinema. And because in, in, there is this like, very clear distinction in, in the cinema that you have a thriller, you have a, you have a um, psychological film, you have a horror and so on. I don't so so is different with painting. I don't belong to any. I don't and I don't want to belong to any to any genre. I can I can say, rather just to leave it as open as possible, to to slide from reality to abstraction and and then back. It's I mean always there's always like searching and is 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 very interesting. Just surprising. Uh, Myself is is the is the most interesting. I don't. I mean, it's not. It's not a. When when I go to the studio, I know more or less what I'm gonna paint. When I I rather keep with myself the print uh, of of the image. But that's the one step. Another step is that I. But 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 sometimes I I leave it. I I, I I'm taking another piece of paper that I brought some days ago. And, but even though I, I try to redraw the outline I have on the printout, uh, I redraw on the canvas, and I can, I, I anticipate that it's gonna look this way. It's, it doesn't work. I mean, sometimes it works, of course, but sometimes um, doesn't. So. I leave it open. I like when some incidents happen along the painting process. So it's an open system. So you don't have a, a kind of a, a, an archive, or you don't have an atlas in a way. Right? I do have. Yes, I do have. But this is, but that, but not in the studio. So what can you tell us about your archive? I'm very my curious archive, about that. My archive. I, I, I have a folder on computer that it, that it's that is titled to work. And I put the um, I put the now na, na, now I now it's distinguished into into images and into ideas. So ideas are for the film, for 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 the comic or for 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 some other projects, and but for the painting there are, there are just uh, images. There are snapshots I I I took by myself. I take by myself, um, um, and the 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 JPEGs from from internet. Sometimes I do also have a I do have, I I have also a physical folder with uh, uh, with a turned out pieces of of, uh, of newspaper. And that of course leads to a question, which is the only your folder of ideas, you know, and uh, uh, and maybe not yet painted, you know, images leads leads to the only recurring question in all my interviews, which is the question of the unrealized project. So I'm very interested. You know, we know so much about architects' unrealized projects as they publish them all the time. And they very often publish reality through, I mean, architecture magazines are full of unrealized <laughs> projects. But we absolutely know nothing about the most well-known artists' unrealized projects. We also don't know much about novelists and poets' unrealized projects. And there are obviously lots of different, you know, reasons why a project is unrealized. Projects which are too big to be realized. Um, maybe mm. utopias, uh, projects which are... Um, too small to be to be realized, uh, forgotten projects, uh, dreams. Doris Lessing, whom I often saw in London the last couple of years of her life, she she always said there is this other category, you know, which is projects which we don't dare to do, you know, like self-censor projects. Then of course projects which we can't do because they're they're being censored. It's a whole huge range of unrealized projects. So I was just wondering um, if you can tell us maybe about one or two or some of your Unrealized so this, yeah, that uh, today visiting visiting the um, Kunstmuseum, and I saw so many artworks. So and whenever whenever I go to the museum, my my head is buzzing because of because of because of ideas for 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 new works. Um, so that's the 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 
that's the one thing. But the other thing is that we we want to. It's there is still. I know I will go back to my to my hometown to the to the place where I grew up and to the and I want to get back to the, the to to the project with the factory in the shadow of I, I grew up because there there is the factory I was I grew up so close to the to the fence of the factory that I that, that I could hear the uh, the noise of the factory in, uh, during the night but also the factory itself is is like a, is is so inspiral and I and it is again it refers to my childhood to the threat of couple of, I mean it, it it was almost 10 years ago uh, we were trying with Anka uh, to make a film it's called Fallout we did it with uh, with Sadie Cole but but did, um, we weren't happy with the outcome because we were we were we were not enough experienced there was actually our first film and um, there were some mistakes we made, we we made uh, during the filming, during making the film, and uh, so this is still the idea. And the, the the idea for the film was to was to was to was to make a film about uh, post-apocalyptic, I would say, leftovers of of, of uh, humanity. How people try to put their lives together. After that, after that, after that uh, disaster, like a uh, nuclear disaster. Nu nuclear disaster. So a bit like in your paintings, where the nuclear. Yeah. There are of course also some amazing paintings, no? Where the. Yes, but this is yeah, yeah, but but it but it has of course, but 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 this nuclear threat was always was always present when when I was a kid. One of the one of the legends of this this city legend says that uh, that uh, that there is the American missile. Um, that is uh, that's gonna that's gonna come to to our city because it's important on the map of of uh, chemical industry, and it was very, it was it was it was um, it was quite known among kids. We were we were sharing the information when it's gonna happen and so on. So that's that's one of the that's one of the ideas. I think we we still I I still find it uh, unexplored. This 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 this. Uh, the subject and uh, and the site itself. So I want to, once we will get back to uh, there to make a film. And do you have any unrealized projects in relation to to public space? I was kind of wondering uh, about uh, you know sort of public painting murals or you know any kind of projects where your 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 artwork enters the public space. Are there any unrealized projects in that? Because very often artists have you know unrealized public commissions or. No, I've never, I've never, I've never been asked. I mean, maybe once or twice for 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 for, for making a public piece. Uh, when I, uh, a couple of days when I saw when I saw piece of when I saw uh, some uh, images from uh, land art, I, I thought that I would like to make one at the Polish countryside, like among, among just really really tough countryside where where are the slaughterhouses, where are the uh, where are the just a mm, big styles, big, just just very ordinary, ugly uh, neighborhood. So that's an unrealized project. That's an unrealized project. Now I was thinking we should talk a little bit about the room upstairs. You know this amazing room here at the Bar Foundation of your of your paintings. Uh, it's almost like a you know a mini exhibition in a way because it works from uh, a whole you know, from different periods in your work and. Um, I mean, one thing you, I was thinking today about is looking at the, you know, Casper painting and the Anka painting, is that you once said that the most difficult thing is to paint in a way the people who are closest to you, you know, your family, that that's the most complex thing, that it's almost easier to paint someone you don't know. Um, uh, so I wanted to ask you to tell us about these, these portraits and, and, and also the importance for, you know, for you, of, of painting and painting again and again, your your family. Yes, this is, but this is it's it's not going to be a tribute to my family. This is this, that, that I paint them because I because I live with them, and this is for me uh, somehow obvious. Uh, mm, I don't know. I, it is important. It is important because because that because they are first viewers, and they, they I don't want them to be uh, unrecognizable. 
on the portraits, but I, uh, but, um, um, well, th th they are not indifferent to me. So, so that that's why I want them to look these, just this, not the other way. And um, I remember first time when I when I was trying to paint Kasper. I think he was five years old. I tried many times. I, I, I um, and it's always. There was always Anka's Anka's portrait instead of him, so I I, I could see Anka, not An Anka, not not him. So finally, I decided to not to paint his face, but to put the letter K as the first letter of his name. Um, but I but what I'd like to, to to tell that I don't need, uh, I don't have to have any personal relationship to the person I I paint. Sometimes it can be totally. Anonymous person that I that I that the image I, I I come across, and then it's of course also places you 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 paint. For example, the, the Sutra Tower has to do with uh, a stay in San Francisco. So I think it wasn't a residency, but you just went there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, we we just we just rented the house house for 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 six months. We we lived there, and and that's the the view of Sutra Tower. And this is not the only this is not the only tower I painted. I I, I think that that's what I like that uh, that in in different areas you have this you have these antennas mm -hmm. uh, designed in a particular way. They are like the landmarks of the place, not necessarily landmarks because people because I don't know uh, citizens of the city they don't refer to it. They don't they don't don't want to think of it, but, but there is always one. So I, I always pay I always see them and they they, they are. Uh, yeah, and then with the capital, uh, that's of course connected to a book from your school days. That's so. That's that's another kind of possibility. That very often uh, your own biography, very old yeah. documents. You ask me. You ask me about the, about the the, uh, the atlas. If I have one, yeah. So yeah. there's one. If I, I mean, I, I have encyclopedia from the from the from the past, from the 80s. I have these 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 books, these geography and history books from my school days. I keep them with myself. But this painting I painted after after the image from the book, but with an, with a, with the awareness that I think 80 percent of of uh, citizens of uh, Washington DC that are the black people. So that's why I painted this. And then there is the stock. Uh, that's a more recent painting for 2014 and that's that's of course a, a Polish symbol. <laughs> that's one of the I, I think yeah I think this is this is the uh, the alternative Polish symbol because we have an we have an eagle in uh, uh, in the emblem. Uh, <laughs> proud huge white eagle. But there is, but there is the, uh, the but the, but sometimes we are, uh, uh, but 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 lots of lots of storks come. Uh, they they spend they spend summer time in, in Poland, which is which is another like a Polish symbol. So that's why why there is the stork. And the oldest painting is Partisans from 2005. Can you tell us about that? The, that these are the these are also the Partisans. I uh, the, the image I found I found in a book from. Um, uh, about about the, about districts uh, I grew up at. These are just anonymous partisans. I li I I liked I liked the, the faces. I thought I can I can paint them, referring to the periods of of pre-war period as a cubistic, uh, expressionistic uh, form. So that's the one. And that has to do with uh, that image is found or. Yeah, this is this, this yeah. Again, from your atlas. Yeah, this is this is from my atlas. No, this is not. I mean, atlas. If I can, if I can, if I can uh, <laughs> make the distinction, this is not the atlas because it, this is at home in in the studio. I have this, this only this couple of books. Was I? I don't want to. This is also what is important for me not to mix up. Uh, mm, I like the situation when I have to when I leave my studio. I have to I have to close the door. I don't want to. I, I couldn't probably paint in the same building where I where I live. So the atlas is something that is in my studio, and the other materials that are just like a, that are like a regular books that are in that are on the shelves, and these are at home. 
and a lot has been written about your work ethic. Um, and, and, you know, we spoke about your, your, your grandmother and the story with the river. It seems that the work ethic has to do with your grandfather. Can you tell us about that? That's true. Yeah, he was, he was, one, of the, he was one of these positi positivists that, that he was... Um, he was a hard worker. I mean, he worked hard. He was, uh, um, he was a worker at this factory. I don't know how it's called. He was, uh, uh, he was a man who, who works with the machine that can carve the spinning materials. I don't know how it's called. Anyway, so that was, he was, uh, and, and, the, and the myth, one of the myths of, 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 of him is that he, that he worked, actually he worked for 40 years at the same factory that uh, if he weren't sick, he didn't miss a day uh, of work. So I think I grew up also in this, in this idea of work, as something that is, uh, doesn't, doesn't necessarily have to bring money, but uh, makes you more valuable, important. I don't, well, maybe not not necessarily this way. But anyway, also when I when I was a kid, I was I was uh, taught by my father about this uh, triada. That's like a, first you have to do what is necessary, then what is uh, fruitful, and then what is pleasure. What is for pleasure? So I think that this this all uh, my grand my grandfather and this and this uh, this saying of my father that first you have to do what is necessary. Uh, that that's built my that's make that's made me uh, a hardworking man. And I think it's also important because, of course, that has also to do the work ethic has also to do with this idea of being a, an active citizen. No, because it's, it's it's it. And I think that's something we haven't spoken about yet because it's you say that you kind of hate this idea of an artist who you know who's just exclusive in the work and that you feel the artist has to be mm. an an active citizen. So I wanted to ask you to explain that to us a little bit, and particularly also what it means in you know 2017 mm -hmm. in Poland to be an you know an active citizen. The other day, uh, it was actually about a year ago, I sat at the dinner next to the mayor of uh, of Warsaw, who was at that time one of the last remaining politicians who wasn't you know in power in Poland, who wasn't part of that you know extreme form of nationalism which rules now in national politics in Poland. And she told me how nationalism is changing the constitution, how, you know, and you often said that you, you, you hate two things, you hate nationalism and you hate Catholicism. So I wanted to ask you, you know, to talk a little bit, it's, I think it's the part we talk a little bit about politics and how you see this idea of the artist as an active citizen in 2017. Whenever I, whenever I have chance to, to talk about it in, in, in public, in Poland especially, I do, and I think that that's what I, I because I, I see, I, I want to make distinction between, between being uh, political uh, artist and political citizen. I think that's what's important to be, I mean, that's, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what is the, I don't have, a, I have the idea to be, uh, how to be um, political. Uh, artists, of course. I, I, at least I don't. I, I can't find myself being a political artist. But but be, being political citizen, being aware, being being caring, what's going on around, uh, and whenever having chance to speak loudly, uh, one should do. And that's what I also with that. that I think this is the, this is also the difference between between painting and between uh, making the films because I think that uh, that, the, that the painting is rather has rather minor impact on reality. People, there's not the many people that you can that you can influence with uh, with a painting. On the contrary to the film, and I think our last film with Anka is is a sort of a statement. It's even a. a um, Yes, it's, 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 I mean, it, it, it is, it is open public political voice against uh, Polish situation, I think, I believe. And being, being a political, yeah, uh, for me also this idea of, of being an artist totally, totally uh, 
excluded from reality is totally obsolete. It's something that is, uh, well, it's not obsolete, it's, it's, it's igno it's, it, it is ignorance. So whenever I have chance, I, I want to talk aloud what I think about politics in Poland. And which film is that? Can you tell us about that? Uh, it, it, it looks. That, is that after Columbus? Yeah, yeah. This is this is this is the this is the this is the film. This is the full length film. Uh, it it's called. It looks pretty. From um, the sun, the sun blinded me, and it's it is based based roughly on the Stranger by Albert Camus, but it has but it refers to the. Um, to the Polish relationship to to the to the possible immigrants, so that's the that's the film. Mm -hmm. Maybe one or two very last questions. <clears throat> one thing I wanted to ask you is, in in my last conversation I had with him, Umberto Eco, you know, was very concerned about the disappearance of handwriting, calligraphy, doodling, sketching, drawing, you know, in our digital age. And um, I wanted to ask you if you're a doodler. Uh, if you have sketchbooks and, you know, for your films and your paintings and all the things you do, if you, you know, if you draw a sketch doodle? I do a lot. I do, but n maybe, maybe not the doodles, but, but the proper sketches. I do a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I, whenever I travel, I keep, I keep, the, I keep the sketchbook with, with myself. I have a pile of them from... I, I, um, in, in 1997, I, 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 that was the first one. That was the first one I dated. That was the first one with a date on it, and this is this is just belongs to one place in Krakow when I used to go to 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 make a sketches. Yeah, and I still I still do a lot. And then maybe one very last question about. It's actually kind of funny because today. I told a friend that, you know, we do this interview later. So my friend said, um, what is your favorite painting of, of Willem Sassler? And then I kind of said, I don't answer what is your favorite questions. But then I kind of thought on the way here, uh, you know, what is my favorite painting? And one painting, I mean, there are many, but one painting which I always think of is this amazing painting. I think it's called Photophobia, because I think it's an amazing, um, Amazing painting. It connects also to light. What you said before about the film, but it's, it, it's fear of light, um, and it's kind of, in a way, a portrait of something we all experience. The portrait of a of a hangover. So I wanted to ask you to tell us about this incredible painting. The, yes, the, the 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 reason was very was was very usual. I there was the there was. Um, um, there was the moment when I woke up and I, and I, 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 I of course, I, I woke up with hangover. I, 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 par I parted uh, night before with with friends, and I, and, and I decided to make a, to make a painting about this, about uh, hatred towards light, how I hate it. The first, <laughs> the first moment I open, I open my eyes, and, but of course it. So that was very mundane reason, but also, but I, uh, but but I wanted also to refer to to blindness and to that. Yeah. And maybe a very last question because I know we are out of time. So, but I have one more urgent question, which is, uh, Rainer Maria Rilke wrote this uh, magnificent little book, which is an advice to a young poet, um, and. I was kind of wondering what in 2017, you know, because I also see some young artists here and students here, what would be your advice to, to a young art student or to a young film student? To be, to be yourself and uh, not to make things to to please the others, not to flatter. That could not be a better conclusion. Wilhelm, thank you so, so much.